in the operations building of a great naval air station is located one of the worldwide chain of weather stations manned by the Navy's aerographer's mates. Pilots look to these wind balls to learn which runway is to be used for their takeoff. Direction of takeoff is determined by the weather vane. The wind direction and velocity are recorded on these dials. But pilots also want to know about the weather thousands of feet aloft or thousands of miles away. One of the first steps in predicting weather is checking the humidity of the atmosphere by the use of this instrument, the psychrometer. The psychrometer is dipped in water and whirled to determine the humidity by the rate of evaporation. To test weather conditions above ground level, the aerographer's mates send up small balloons. This balloon is being inflated with helium gas. And by its rise and drift, the direction and velocity of the wind aloft can be calculated. But the wind seldom remains constant, varying over ocean, valley, and mountain regions. However, when its direction and velocity are learned, and the results relayed from point to point, the entire pattern of air movement can be known. By means of this instrument, the theodolite, the aerographer's mate can follow the flight of the balloon and determine accurately its rise and drift. The talker relays information concerning it over his battle phones to the men below. In turn, this aerographer's mate plots the balloon's course on the plotting disk. Another balloon takes aloft the world's smallest broadcasting unit, the Raisondi transmitter. This will broadcast weather reports up to a height of 15 miles, where pressure of gas inside the balloon will explode it, and the Raisondi transmitter will float to Earth by parachute attached to it. Alternately, during every 15 seconds, this radio sends out signals on temperature and humidity. Atmospheric pressure is also indicated from which the altitude of the balloon can be determined. These signals are picked up on a special radio Raisondi receiver. This information, together with data received by teletype from other stations, is transferred to a weather map and relayed for the benefit of shore stations and ships at sea. Much of the aerographer's mate's work is done around planes, either at air bases ashore or on carriers at sea. Under normal circumstances, this plane will not take off before the aerographer's mate gets a favorable report on weather flight conditions to clear its departure. As they do ashore, aerographer's mates aboard ship keep a constant check on weather conditions. The balloon's movements will indicate the direction and the velocity of the wind aloft. Determining the wind's movements will aid in anticipating approaching weather conditions. Whether it is one plane leaving a carrier or an operation involving an entire fleet, weather plays a vital part. No planes will take off without the green flag from the men who predict the weather. The fleet wants to move under cover of a storm. A commando party wants to make a landing on a foggy night. Bombers must know the weather conditions they will encounter, all depending upon the aerographer's mates. 